بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد regarding fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it permissible of course to enjoy the for the husband and wife to enjoy one another in the evening Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem uhilla lakum laylat as-siyami rafadha ila nisaikum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it permissible during the evenings uh, of the, 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 in the evenings on those days in which you're fasting your, your, your wives so the husband and wife can enjoy one another during those times when they can have sexual relations akramakum Allah and regarding that it's very important to know and understand the ahkam related to right before fasting for one we need to have our intention right before fajr comes in you need to have intention that you're going to fast the holy month of ramadan so we're talking specifically about ramadan not extra fasting if you're doing su supererogatory uh fasting then the 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 nafla or nafila or what have you then the ulama state that it's permissible to make that intention even after Fajr as long as you haven't eaten already. But as far as uh, the Holy uh, uh, Ramadan, it, the intention must be made before Fajr, before Fajr comes in. And another issue that arises is that after relations, some people they go to sleep so then they wake up when they're a junub so what's the hukum regarding that meaning that they've had relations with their husband or wife or what have you or they had maybe a wet dream or whatever caused them to ejaculate akramakumullah what is the ruling waking up in that state and then it's fast it's time to fast that it's time you maybe you miss suhoor or even regardless of whether you miss suhoor or not but it is now when, when you enter the time for Fajr. So what is the ruling pertinent to that? On Aishita, radiallahu ta'ala anha, wa um salamata zawja nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, may Allah uh, be pleased with both of them, the mothers of the believers. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana yudrikahu al-Fajr, وَهُوَ جُنُبْ مِنْ أَهْلِهِ ثُمَّ يَغْتَسِلُ وَسْيَسُومْ رُوَاهُ بُخَارِ وَمُسْلَمْ In the hadith of Aisha wa Umm Salama رضي الله تعالى عنهما They said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم used to sometimes Fajr would come upon him meaning that he would reach uh, the time that Fajr is entered and he would be in a state of Junub meaning that he had had uh, from his wives and he was in a state of Junub from his wives then he would take a shower and he would fast this lets us know that the person who is in a state of junub, meaning they've had relations, that when they reach the time of Fajr and regarding fasting, that it's permissible for them to delay the ghusl until right before they, they pray. Meaning that if that happens, uh, either they delayed it until right before they're going to uh, go to the masjid or make salat or what have you that if the time has entered for fajr and they have not made ghusl there is no sin on them or anything and their fast is sahih 
And that's the main point that we wanted to mention is that their fast is sound, even if they're in a state of junub, from waking. And some of the benefits that the ulama mentioned is that the fasting of the person who wakes up in a state of junub from sexual intercourse, akramakum Allah, from the night, their fast is sound. It's, it's no problem with their fast. A second thing is that they make qiyas uh, related to jima and ihtilam, you know, when a person has a wet dream, that due to the fact that if a person who has junub is uh, it's permissible for them to fast. Min babo ola, or first and uh, even more so, that would be the case with the person who has a wet dream. Because a wet dream was not done out of choice, but the sexual relations was done from choice. This was a matter of choice uh, between the spouses. So, due to that fact that if a person wakes up with a wet dream, from a wet dream, and it's time to fast, and they haven't made a shower, their fasting is, is sound, it's sahih. Another benefit we gain from this is that there's no difference between uh, the fast of Ramadan in this and uh, nafla, you know, fast, extra fast outside of the month of Ramadan. That all of them, the hukum is the same regarding uh, waking up junub. Another benefit from this hadith is that this hadith shows us a permissibility, of course, that during the nights of Ramadan, the, and even if it is close to the time of Fajr, so this is the important point, that even if it is close to Salat al-Fajr, to that time, that the husband and wife can still enjoy one another, as long as Fajr has not, the time for Fajr has not entered. So as long as it's still before the Fajr, even if it's 10 minutes before, or what have you, the husband and wife can enjoy one another as long as they uh, stop having relations when, they, uh, when the time of Fajr comes in. So obviously it's not better to be very close like that to, and that we should be cautious and out of water and taqwa that we should be careful of that so that way we do not, uh, we're not having relations uh, during the time it is prohibited and that that could uh, affect our fasting. So those are some of the main benefits. A, a last very important issue that Sheikh Ali Bassam <coughs> Rahimahullah Ta'ala that he mentioned, he said that this hadith also illustrates the benefits of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that they were the best of the women of this ummah, of this nation, and that they mentioned and narrated many hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and gave us knowledge about the religion that was very beneficial knowledge, and especially those rulings pertinent to what goes, be, go, goes on behind closed doors re, related to those issues in the home, which the other Sahaba and other people would not be able to be aware of except for the wives of the Prophet Wasallam regarding ghusl and regarding uh, those issues re, re, regarding having relations and junub and things like this. A lot of those issues that only the wives of the Prophet Wasallam were able to witness and, 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 and carry that knowledge and transmit that knowledge to us and that is from their fadl, as that is from their great benefit and their greatness in this Ummah Muhammadiyah. And those are some of the main benefits of this hadith. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.